This is how we have to do it. Okay, so it's been a minute. Uh, we have not put up a video. We've been extremely busy. We've had a lot of things going on. But uh, not just that. There's been some uh, personal things going on. Uh, and we have been extremely busy, distracted, whatever you want to call it. So lots we're gonna we'll cover those real quick. We've had a lot a lot of people hitting us up as to why we haven't posted uh, videos. So here's what's going down. Here's the lowdown. Brandy's broken again, so just a little bit of medical stuff going on. I'm gonna be fine, as I knew, we well, you know, because I'm pretty tough. Um, so a little surgery in the future, and then bada bing, bada boom, back at it. Um, so that was something, a little bit, a little bit well, of a stress. We had, let's just say it, we had three months of biopsies and uh, doctors not being convinced that it wasn't cancer. So that left us with a lot of fear. So that's where we've been. Um, and I'll tell you one thing. I want to just shout out to my work, Clawson Motorsports. They've been amazing through this whole process. They have been awesome. Even your work, like uh, you, they've been letting you get all my appointments and thank you for yeah. always going with me. Of course. So we have, um, we that's... made it through that. That's us, Team Dandy. That's where it's at. That's where so, it's at. but we're moving on now. We got, and we have, we've also been busy on top of that. Uh, crazy timing. Uh, we have been doing MTS shotguns. We are MTS off roof. There's a sign. Let's yep, look at right it. There. What? Yeah. So lots of shock tunes. So thank you to all the customers who have reached out and um, brought their cars or shipped their shocks or you know called and talked to us about it. We appreciate it. We love yep. it. Okay. So one of the first things no well, not even one of the first things i noticed but just one of the first things that came to mind after we got home and i thought about it a little bit was clutching uh the difference in the clutching so you know the clutches are bigger the belts longer wider the clutches are further apart to and bigger around so the belt doesn't turn as many times so it doesn't overheat as much all these things right but something that nobody has discussed because you are gonna you know I understand that, you know, Polaris says you break in your belt, you're not going to break it. You Can-Am says it. They all say that, right? We're going to break a belt. We're going to break a belt. And not like we're because we're like, ah, ha, just going no, no, happen. Just, yeah, I don't, break, I don't break it in properly. I use too much throttle. And some of you guys are going to go, oh, how can we, you know, criticize it? Because we want to run I'm going to do that if I want to. Anyway, so we're going to break a belt. And when we do, we need to change it. And here's one of the things that's a struggle. In our Can-Am, we end up running a clutch liner. Clutch outside of the clutch itself is already only this far from the clutch housing, so it can be a pain in the butt to get the belt back in, as many of you know who have changed your belt. Uh, then you add a clutch liner, it's even worse. That one I noticed on that, maybe I'll put up a picture right here. That clutch housing seems to have a pretty good gap in between the belt, the edge of the belt, or the edge of the clutch itself, and the housing. So you notice these things when you when it's been a pain point for you because we yeah. do change a lot of belts. Pain point. Yeah, so you're bang, like literal pain point banging around in there sometimes. So, so you're not going to go buy a $45,000 car because it's easier to change the belt. But but that's just something that's, that's like, it seems awesome. Yeah. So as far as the cab goes, what do you think about that? Okay, so the cab, let's just get this out there because I, some people are, um, what do you say, nonchalant about discussing the cab. The cab's the same as a, an XP Pro. We already had an XP Pro. It's the same cab. There are minor changes within that cab. Uh, like some venting and stuff like that. But when you sit down in it, if you sit down, sit down in the two cars, you wouldn't know the difference. The seating position and all that's the same. Uh, all the aesthetics are the same. Right. It's the same cab. Um, however, the cage is not. The cage is giant. It has more headroom. It mounts to the frame with a Morris Taper connection. A quick little, a quick little side note. Okay. Uh, clutching, right? Uh, on any of the cars and and let's keep in mind so for example our car is now making about 235 horsepower I can't am and it's uh, the clutch itself that spins the wheels with all that horsepower is attached to the crank with a Morse taper and a single bolt so all that horsepower is held back by a Morse taper and a bolt so I'm feeling like the cages on there are pretty good I feel like they know what they're doing and that they did it yeah. for a reason and yeah you're right um, and and also, I'm going to say something about the cage. On the Pro, yeah. I've said this before, it's the, as far as Razor goes, it's, it's the, the nicest looking cage stock. Comes out looking pretty good. They've never it built a cage. It doesn't look like a Jeep. Yeah, they've... <laughs> it's not 27 feet high. They've never built a cage that looked that good. No. It's yeah. a good looking cage. I, some I mean, somebody's going to make... Some people might not lock it. It is kind of, you know, it is kind of fishbowl big a little bit. There's going to be other cages. I get it. So, anyway. It'll happen. All right. So... so 29 inches of wheel travel. Here's the thing. 
right? People are going to be like, oh, buddy. Here, there's different strokes for different fucking different strokes. 29 inches of wheel travel. That's a lot. It's a whole lot. And we're not going to get into usable versus not usable, uh, but it's a lot. That's a big number. When yeah. I was watching the release video, I was like, did they say 29? Yeah. I and think it, a lot of people it, must have thought that too. Yeah, when you're out riding and you're uh, going through some giant whoops or you're hitting G outs and you're at that last few inches of travel and you hit that bump stop and you hurt your back, one more inch would make the difference. The last inch always okay. matters. What? So it has three inch internal bypass, dual valve shocks. So it controls both compression and rebound. This is new. Nobody else has this. I think uh, the rate at which it controls those valves is also faster than previous generations of software. Uh, all this makes a big difference. Uh, will people make changes in the suspension and the shocks and the blah, blah, blah? Of course. We all know that we're all the same. We like to tweak yeah. on it. But hey, what about the settings? You have four settings now. Baja, rock, track, comfort. Yeah. So those are the, uh, the ride command that, you know, that controls the shocks. And so they've offered, well, it used to be three, oh, it used to be, it's right here. Three settings. Now there's four. Yeah, we have firm, sport, and comfort in the Turbo S. Um, so now they have four, and that's rock, trail, Baja, and track. Okay, so suspension. Uh, while, we're, while we're on the shocks, the suspension itself, uh, boxed A-arms. We did get a chance to pick those up and fill them. Beefy. They're, they're pretty heavy, which is on one side on one side of the coin, unfortunate, because the more weight you have down there, yeah, anyway. But um, the other side of that is people complain all the time about the, like on the Can-Am, the, <sighs> the super thin metal boxed. But... So these are stout. They're no joke. Yeah. They're They're like, that car has so much weight. Yeah. Well, I mean, but then when you have a car that, that's lighter, people are like, oh, that's a piece of junk. You got to replace it. It's a point of failure. No one's happy. <laughs> All right. So the box suspension, uh, I think it's a winner. I think it is too. I think it's, it's it looks idea. stout. I think, it it, I think it's going to hold up well. Uh, I did hear recently they raced the car. They had an issue with the fork that uh, comes off the end of the shock that wraps around the front axle and the yeah, the front axle, um, that it uh, broke and hit the axle. That's pre-production. Yeah, right? but that was a pre-production car. So anyway, uh, next. Next. Okay, so the big, this is the big thing. So I don't know when, when we, you know, this is the worst kept secret in Polaris history, everybody says. Yeah. And we're not going to name names, but somebody out there, uh, what's well, been two years ago, was talking about a year, over a year, over a year ago, I was talking about this car, you know, the Pro XP is going to have a four-cylinder. And I believed it, but yet couldn't imagine it. Um, it's here. It's crazy. Uh, it's a lot of motor. Of and I can't um, really discuss. Uh, we can just talk about the facts. The yeah. facts is that it has a two, like, we are talking about 2000 cc, naturally aspirated, four-cylinder, 225, 225 horse. horse. 100, and here's an important thing that nobody talks about. 162 foot-pounds of torque. That's a big number for naturally aspirated. Um, it probably runs good. I, I mean, think. I would think that they probably done their research. So when everybody always says it's a slingshot motor, that's all they did. Yeah. We looked at it. We saw it with our own eyeballs. We talked to Pat. It's not. It's well, different. Well, here's the thing. It's based in that, but there are some differences. So it has a lightened, lightened flywheel. And it has uh, different rods, I think different rods and pistons, and it ends up being 12 to 1 compression. Different so, camshaft profile. Like yeah, camshaft, diff yeah. yeah, so there's some definite differences that give it that performance to get to 235 horsepower, 162 foot-pounds of torque. We said it's little and torquey. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm assuming there must have been some issues with uh, uh, losing oil pressure at high angularity uh, trail rides rock or something. Crawling, trail ride. We don't do a lot of that. We're uh, if we're this way, we're there briefly because we're doing a wheelie. Then we're anyway. But uh, they have made some improvements in that area. So so big news on the four cylinder. Um, that's huge. I was actually surprised that it actually happened and that it's here, and it looks amazing. And, and you can't. Well, let's just talk about that four cylinder though. You can't register it as a side by side. Yeah, we're not that's going to be your that. dealer's problem. We're not going to get into that right yeah. now. That's a whole nother deal. But, but they're going to sell the car and people are going to buy it and they're going to ride it. So That's all that matters. All and right. this is good for us no matter what. This is good for all of us as riders because that what they're doing and just up in the game, what's going to happen next year with all these other manufacturers? They have to up their game too. Yep. Or they're out. All right. So four cylinder. Amazing. I can't believe it happened. I'm actually shocked. It's here. People are going to drive it. Um, and I can't wait. And we drove it. 
We'll talk about that later. So real quick, uh, a lot of people, well, I, don't, I guess I don't see it a lot, but there are some concerns if you race your car and you have a bunch of lights or, you know, if you have a stereo and you have all kinds of accessories. Well, everything's getting better now too, so it's yeah. pulling more power. These days, sure. like, do so. Typically, we just run intercoms, uh, maybe a light bar or I two. I sing. We don't need music. So we don't uh, we don't encounter a lot of issues. We, let's be honest. We don't encounter issues with low batteries at all ever. If we do, it's just because the battery needs to be replaced. But uh, and oh, most we left our radio on. And really, honestly, garage. yeah, really. Well, that's not why it's running. But really, honestly, no one we ride rides with really experiences that either. But an upgraded stator can be beneficial if you run a lot of accessories. This car, you won't have to do that because it has a generator problem solved. So that would be an additional cost on a car if that's your thing and you're running a lot of accessories. The fact that it has an alternator now. Yeah, which takes us into another area, and that's price point. Because the price point... Everybody's gonna, mad about yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to be high. It's going to be up there. It's going to be a bunch of money. Um, but... Uh, it's what else amazing. are you going to do with your money, well, though? Right. It's an amazing car because we're getting into Sandrail level now. It's no longer, you know, it's it's bone stock, 235 horsepower, 120, 225 horsepower, 162 foot pounds of torque. Um, it's, uh, and I, let's be honest, there's probably some potential for growth there, but we won't get into that. I'm sure that that's going to happen. We know it will. So the price point, it's up there. But if you wanted to buy this car and run it the way it is, it's one of the most capable as far as having a cage that's doable, having suspension that's doable. Having your harnesses. Having, well, a lot of the cars now come with four point harness. Okay, but your seat, okay, then you talk harness. about your shocks, like not having yeah. to redo, you said suspension. Yeah, that's our suspension. Uh, so, tuning to get more horsepower. Yeah, clutching. Uh, so there's a lot of things that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily upgrade that they would currently. So, so and, I it's, mean, and yeah. let's be honest, it's just, if you look at the car, it's the next level thing. It's a next level car. It's not, so, uh, I'm going to get into some personal opinions here a little bit. But, well, let's talk about 74 inches wide. Okay, real quick, we'll cover that. 74 inches wide. It's amazing. Uh, so, it's a sand car for sure. It's not going to be a back east trail car. Uh, but it'd be excellent in the desert, in the wide open desert. It'd be excellent in the dunes. That's what we do. So we love this car. Yeah, because that it's, stance is like exactly what yeah, we would need. It's the thing. So, personal opinion. When the Can Am X3 came out, for me, it demolished everything that existed at the time. You know, at the time you had a, a turbo, what well, you had a, a Razor, a turbo Razor, Razor Turbo. That was just coming out, yeah. That, that had just come out, it was coming out. It was 64 inches wide. It just doesn't compare. It just, it really doesn't. Uh, then you came out with the Turbo S. We're setting them on a great car. Different world still to me. Uh, the can Am still a little bit different. But they were more even, right? Now you have 272. We have the Pro also. Yeah, we had the Pro, a nice car. But that was a 64 inch wide car. So Turbo S, this car, the X3, the, the uh, XP Pro. Now, you know, they're all like, you know, right in that range of horsepower. Well, not, honestly, not the Turbo S. It's the Turbo S less. is 168 out of well, the box. But our okay. Can Am was only 154. Yeah, so let's just step back. Okay. An X317 is 154 horsepower. Then it went to 195. Now it's at like 200. So they are, they were comparable earlier on the Turbo S and the X3. And now the X3 has outgone the horsepower. Uh, the Pro. XP Pro is 181 horsepower. 181 out of the box, the little yeah. car. So it's, it's up there. But if you're doing power adders, power additives, if you're adding power to your car, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a hard stop on these cars, on the Polaris models, that's much lower than the X3. Yeah. So that's kind of where it's been. This car kind of went, that's a step up here. It's you like know? what you can so do now. Yeah. We're, we're in a different world now. I. But I mean, that... Kind of it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, when you talk, I just want to throw this in there. When you talk about price point and how out of the box this has the things, meaning like uh, not having to buy, you know, $2,500 cage, not having to buy, um, how, spend however much money you'd have to spend to do the clutching, right? That's what we were trying to, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, sure. To do the tuning, like $1,000 to flash your ECU and then you got to buy the tune, and um, which I'll do all day. But, um, then I mean the bigger there's a lot of things the shocks and like the tuning mm -hmm. of the shocks all the stuff that you would people buy the car and go yeah I love it I'm just gonna swap the cage out 
I need to add some harnesses. I'm going to go ahead and swap out, get a shock tune. I'm going to get some more power in my uh, <laughs> ECU. Which is still going to happen, honestly. Yeah, it's still going to happen, but still. But for those people, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're looking... Let, Starting let me, here instead let me, of down Let here. me just say this. If you're looking to buy a car that is dune capable and open desert capable and not touch it, it is absolutely one of the most capable looking cars Built in we have seen. Yeah, it's it's there. You look at the car; it's beefy, it's stout, it's ready to go. It's got the horsepower. It's dialed. Yeah. So one I thing I forgot to mention: this is a pain point for a lot of people here. Let me. Yeah. This is a pain point for a lot of people. I don't know if you can see the shifter, but you know, you pull the shifter, and as you get further back, it just kind of doesn't want to go. It. You got to yank it. Doesn't want to go on the gear. That's kind of a pain. They have resolved that issue. They have a push pull cable uh with the it's got like a radius kind of setup we'll show a picture right here and it shifts super smooth like a car yeah so that's the whole they did that because obviously they the main thing that we want to take away from this judging like by all of the stats the specs the video that we did the tour walk around with pat everything that he showed us the touching that we got to do I would say that it was just uh, players listened. Yeah. To listen and been watching the market and seeing what everybody's been asking for, what they wanted in a car, they listened. And w will it perform? That's to be a TBD. But right. looking at it, it, you know, they've listened. So thanks for that. All right. So I think it's, I think it's, I think it's the next level car, and I think we're out. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. While you're here, you might as well subscribe. We got lots of stuff coming. Lots. I mean, we're gonna get back on track. It'll be uh, moving forward. Um, leave a comment. We love hearing from you. If you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. We like that kind. Leave us, uh, I don't know, your opinion, suggestions, some um, what you think about the car. We would love to hear from you. Um, if you don't like it, though, we want to know, too, so just hit that dislike button two times or in multiples of two, and we'll stop it right now. Cease and desist with the offending behavior. So, as always, hope to see you guys in the sand someday. Thank you for everything. Peace. Peace.